You can use the Array tool to copy selected objects in a linear or radial pattern. The Array tool creates several instances of one or more objects that you can then manipulate simultaneously. If you wish, the members of the Array can belong to a group, which gives us some additional benefits. When you select an object, notice that Revit displays a contextual ribbon for modifying that type of element. The ribbon includes both the Modify ribbon bar as well as the contextual ribbon bar to the right. If I click on the Array tool on the Modify panel, notice that the Options bar displays several options. For example, I can click the Linear button to create a linear array in which the elements of the array follow a line, or the Radial button in which case the elements of the array follow an arc. Also notice that there are several other options. Now let's look at the radial array. If I select an object, click the Array tool and choose the Radial button, I can create a radial array, which creates copies of the selected object or objects along a specified arc. If you choose the Group and Associate checkbox, each copy of the object is part of a group that can be modified by editing the group. And the Number field specifies the total number of copies in the array, including the original object. The Move To option lets you control whether the array will be based on the angle between the first and second members of the array, or the total angle to fill. Notice that you can also specify the angle. I'll clear the Group and Associate checkbox and specify a total number of four objects, my original and three copies. I'll select the Move to Last radio button, which means that I'll be specifying the angle between the first and last object. In other words, the angle to fill. Notice that the center rotation symbol appears at the center of the selected object or objects. This symbol indicates the point about which the selected object will be rotated. If I want the center of the array located at a different point, I can drag the center rotation symbol to a different location. Once I've got it positioned where I want it, I can click to specify the first ray of rotation. I then see a snap line and a preview box. Notice that a listening angle dimension appears on the screen. This is a temporary dimension. I can either click to specify the angle, or I can type in an angle value to set a very precise angle. Notice that you can also type a specific angle value in the angle field on the options bar in which case you don't have to click to specify a starting and ending ray. Positive angle values rotate in a counterclockwise direction. In this example, Revit arrays the object so that the number of items you specified are spaced equally between the first and last members. Since I did not select the Group and Associate checkbox, each copy is its own individual object, and I cannot change the total number within this array. I will repeat this tool by pressing Enter, and Revit asks to specify an element or multiple using Control to add to the selection set or Shift to remove elements from the selection set. I will select a different object to array for this example. Press Enter when you have selected the elements. Enable the Group and Associate option and repeat similar steps to create a total of four elements in the array. Now, notice the resulting array is still selected and the number value is highlighted on the array symbol in the drawing area. 
you can type in a new value now, say 5. Press enter to see the changed results, and at any time you can update the array by selecting one or more of its members and hover over the array value. When the tooltip reads edit text, click and type in a new value. You can also edit the group from the contextual ribbon to modify the contents of the array, adjust the nested component, and then click finish on the edit group floating panel to see the results.